Lesson 29 is a big one. It's U Newton's law of universal gravitation, which is big because, as the name implies, it, it, this applies to the entire universe. This is the, the gravitational force between any two masses or any three masses that have in, in the entire universe. So Newton was uh, kind of preoccupied with... Uh, trying to get a formula that relates the force between anything with mass. Because as we know, anything with mass creates a gravitational field, and therefore there is a force between them. So what Newton discovered, you can read through your notes here, what he discovered is, number one, that the force due to gravity, or the gravitational force between two objects, is proportional to their masses. And if you, if you increase the mass, then you increase the gravitational force between the masses. So if you double the masses, then there's going to be twice as much gravitation. Or if you double both masses, it would actually be four times the gravitational force between them. But if you just doubled one, then it would be two times. So that's a pretty straightforward relationship. The other, one, the other relationship is the distance between the objects. As we know, the further apart two objects are, the less the gravitational force between them is. And he found this relationship, which we talked about briefly in the last lesson, which is that the force is inversely related to the distance, the square of the distances between the objects. Okay, so we have two relationships here. One is a direct relationship, and the other is an inverse relationship. So for this one here, as the mass increases, gravitational force increases. This is an inverse relationship because as the dis distance between them, which we call the radius, between them increases, then the force will decrease. So it's an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. Example number one, the force due to gravity between two objects is measured to be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. Determine the magnitude of the force if one of the masses is doubled. A. So we're dealing with this relationship. Force is directly proportional to the product of the masses. And if I double one of the, let's assume that the mass of both of them is one, and we'll always make that assumption because it just makes things easier. If I double one of the masses, then this will become two. And this will become two, and this will become one. And what do I have to do to maintain this relationship? Well, I have to double the force. So now I can see that the force, if I double one of the masses, then the force is doubled. So the initial force was 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16. Then the new magnitude of the force is going to be 2 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16, which equals 3.0 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. So that's a pretty straightforward relationship. You double them, one of the masses, so therefore the force is doubled. The next one's a little trickier. B, if the radius is doubled, so here's the relationship. It's an inverse relationship. And again, we're going to say, well, if the initial radius was 1, and I double the radius, then the new radius will be 2. So what I do in this one is I have to substitute a 2 into the radius, and 2 squared equals a quarter. Equals a quarter. So in, in order to, to, to maintain the relationship here, I must say that the force is there for a quarter. And if the initial force was 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16, oops, I just multiply that by a quarter, and I'm going to get 3.8 times 10 to the negative 17 newtons. All right. So that is if you double the rate. Now let's just uh, do a C example here. Let's just do a C. What if I say if you um, have the radius half have the radius then so if i have the radius then the objects over here here are the two objects and here's the radius between them the distance if i have that in other words it's going to be half the distance one half r 
what's going to happen to the gravitational force between them? It's obviously going to get stronger because they're closer together. So how does that work in terms of what we just did? It would be like this. If I said that the force is inversely proportional to 1 over the radius squared, what would I replace r with now? If the initial radius is 1 and now the new radius is a half, I get this. 1 over a half squared. And 1 over a half squared is 1 over a quarter. And 1 divided by a quarter equals 4. So in other words, to keep this relationship even, the, the force between them is now going to be four times greater. Okay, so there's the basics of the relationship. Now, what Newton did was he combined those two relationships, the relationship between the masses and the radius, into this formula right here. The only thing that was missing from this formula is this value here, g. And g is a constant. In other words, it's a number that you need to determine that will work for every single mass in the universe. So you can, you can probably understand the magnitude of trying to find that number. We want to find a number that I can put in for g that will make this formula true for every single thing in the universe. So this is not an easy thing to do, especially several hundred years ago when uh, technology was not at its finest. Um, so Newton did, so what Newton did was he took this formula, this is, a, this is a very important formula, it's on your formula sheet, it's the gravitational force between two masses at a given distance, or at a given radius. Uh, Newton tried to calculate G, so he rearranged the formula, G, he tried to calculate it, and uh, unfortunately he wasn't able to get the, the value for G. Uh, but along came this guy, Henry Cavendish, and Henry Cavendish did calculate the value for G using a torsion balance, and I strongly recommend you go, uh, go on YouTube and Google Henry Cavendish and watch a uh, video on his torsion balance and how he determined the value um, of G. And this is it. We're not going to go over the details, but this is it. This is the value that he found. 0.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. The very unusual unit here is just so that when you put it into this formula here, all the units will work out because you have to have newtons on this side. And then here you've got kilograms times kilograms. And here you've got meters squared. Right, so you can see where this weird unit comes from. This meter squared here will cancel out that one. This kilogram squared here will cancel out, because it's on the bottom, will cancel out those two, and you're left with newtons. Newtons equals newtons. So that's why it's an unusual uh, unit. So he calculated the gravitational constant to be this one. This is on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it. You're going to use it a great deal. Um, and using that information, we can actually calculate the mass of the Earth. It's a little kind of an intricate process, but we'll go over it. So here's how we do it. We basically use Newton's third law, which says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So let's say you're standing on the Earth. There's a, for, there's a force of you on the Earth, and there's a force of the Earth on you. So we're going to say that the force of gravity or well, the force of the, let's say like this, the man on the earth is equal to the force of the earth on the man. The earth on the man. Now one of those forces is simply mg. So it's m of the man times g equals and now we're going to use, for this one here, we're going to use the new formula that we just learned, which is G times the mass of the man times the mass of the earth divided by the distance between them. And that's the distance from the man to the center of the earth. That's the value R. All right, now how's this going to help us calculate the mass of the earth? Well, as you can see, the mass of the man is irrelevant because oopsie, cancels out. 
G we know, little g we know, big G we know, we actually know the radius of the Earth, and so now we can solve for M Earth. So the mass of the Earth is going to equal G R squared over big G. And those are all values that we know. Little g, 9.81. Radius of the Earth, get one, you fool yourself. Don't need to memorize it. That's the radius of the Earth. Don't forget to square it. G times this number here, the gravitational constants of the universe. And that will spit out an answer of 5.99. Times 10 to the 24. It's 97, I believe, on your formula sheet. Close enough, though. It's big. 5.99 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So that's how they actually determined what the mass of the Earth is. Next, we have an easier example, or a pretty straightforward example. You've got the mass of two things, and you have the distance between them. Determine the force of gravity. Pretty straightforward. G M1 M2 over R squared. Uh, just plug in the numbers. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of one is 200 grams, so 0 0.2 kilograms. The mass of the other divided by the distance between them, 0 0.045. Don't forget to change it to meters. Don't forget to square it. Um, stick that all into your calculator. And you're going to get 2.3 times 10 to the negative 9 newtons. Which is obviously the, for the, the gravitational force between a pickle and a sandwich is going to be extremely low. So you expecting a lump, uh, small number like that. Okay, and then the, now for the last example, actually, I think I'll make a separate video for this last example because it does take a little explaining, so stay tuned.